Hello, the people out there. Um, you've asked me again and again about Harley Benton guitars. And uh, recently I watched uh, Cory Mura and he's like, look, here's this fan Fred T thing and this fan Fred single cut. I'm like, what? So uh, I tried to get him. But then I get a call from Franzi from Toman saying, your soldering kit isn't in stock. I'm like, I, I didn't order a soldering kit. I, I wanted the fan Fred T style to show to you guys. And she's like, oh, let me get right on that. And then someone else got on that, and then someone else got on that, and then Lisa got on that, and then she's like, they're on the way. But they were on the way somewhere else. And it, it, these guitars have seen the world. Now they're here. Let's see what's in the box. Well, I know what's in the box, but we'll check it out anyway. I want to point out that Toma now seems to have... I don't quite know... This must be what that they're still using up whatever they've bought. But instead of the plastic, they seem to be using this crumple up paper stuff. Which is very cool because it would be so much better than the plastic. I just got another box downstairs which only had the paper. How cool would that be from Toman not to use plastic anymore? This has a sticker on it from QC, which means quality control checked it out. And this is, oh nice, so well, I guess we'll start with this one. You of course know what this video is about because you saw the title. I didn't know what this video would be about, because it's about whatever guitar I grabbed out of the box first. Holy crap, that's a white fan. I ripped it, now it's mine. Ooh, that's pointy. What the fuck, people? We'll see if that comes off. Look. Look at that. Oh. This is a calf top. It's a... It's a single cut with a, a probably three-piece neck. Has a volute right there. Look, it has a volute. Grover tuners. It's the SC7 Fanfred Deluxe. Uh, Grover tuners, of course, seven of them. Um, nice paint job. String through body, Didarios. Nice little calf here, nice little calf there. The top is gorgeous. It has a couple of specks in here, which could be paint. It could be in in the wood. Obviously, this is a veneer. Oh, it's dirty. You have to polish that. So uh, let's go to this camera. Yeah, let's look at this. Can you see the little specks? Let's see if this camera can focus uh, focus in on it. Yes. There are a couple of little black black specks in here, but whatever. The top is gorgeous. Veneer, okay. Let's look if the dots are centered. Well, they're not. <laughs> no guitar ever has centered dots, as Andy and I figured out. Uh, they are all towards the bottom of the binding. But apparently that's what everyone does. Um, there's a little bit of uh, paint there. Right there, a little paint. Um, I love the knobs that have been sunk into the body. That is such a s amazingly pretty, elegant way to do it. Um, just right here, there's a little bit of paint or something or glue. Or it looks like chipped. It looks like the... Um, the high gloss chipped a tiny little bit there. Have I mentioned this guitar is like 300 bucks? Um, wow. Other than that, I mean, these are very tiny things. She said, I love these for rules right here. That is very elegant. Bindings done nicely. 
beautiful translucent standard jack plate. The look of this guitar is gorgeous. Um, and not like Ibanez, where the fretboard would just continue here and be rectangular. So you would see the rest of the fretboard up here, which is kind of why um, they actually really cut the fretboard off. It looks as if that the nut is a little bit, yep, it's a little bit too high. It should have been filed down a bit more, but hey, whatever. Um, nice, leaves us tuning to see how those Grovers work. Now, is it, uh, what, what do you guys call that? Not top heavy. Is it, ah, oh, does it have neck dive? That's what you always want to know. Um, when it's hanging, I don't, I don't know. Here it doesn't. Doesn't feel like it, but it probably does. I mean, it's a huge head and I don't have a strap. I do. This, by the way, this, by the way, is why these videos get longer and longer because you guys have more and more things you want me to check out and then you bitch about these videos being long. So fine, we'll check out Neck Dive. Nope. Actually nice and balanced. Who would have thunk, as they say, which is wrong, who would have thought? So we're gonna go to B, because I don't do drop A and shit, well I do. Tune skis work nice and smooth. The fretboard, well yeah, on the binding, the paint went a little bit in the binding, not super pretty but forgivable. I like the dots on the side, that's subtle. Fretboard is probably Ebonol or something like this. I could look it up, but you know what, you could also look it up yourselves through the link below, which is how you support my channel by using that link. Well, actually, technically, you use the link and then buy something. Not necessarily this, buy a pack of strings or, I don't know, drugs. I don't know, doesn't have that, so buy something. But even if you don't, that's fine. Rings nice and open. A little bit. Nice action, but it probably has to come up a bit. Yeah, it's the it's hitting the frets a bit. Well, let's check it out. So we have a couple of things that we can check out. Which is, um, first we'll start clean into the Rev Dynamis through the aux. It is a little bit weird to play open chords because it's a really wide fan. Do I have wide fans? That sucked. With the white fan, you have to get used to it. Uh, people ask me, what is the fan fret for? It's very simple. Um, lower strings should be stretched tighter. The tighter the string, the faster your response, the faster your attack. So when you're playing le metal, you want those strings to be really responsive. If they have a shorter scale, they'll be less responsive because they'll be too loose, le trick is a painter, um, to get that attack. The higher strings, you don't want to have that tightness because then you can bend and shit. So th the lower the string, the longer the scale, the better. The higher the string, shorter scale is better. So therefore, you just give each string the scale that it deserves. A little bit, takes a little bit getting used to. weird. Nice, clean.
clear sounds. Especially open chords feel weird because it's very wide here. So the neck might have to be adjusted because it's it's sitting on the frets here. And they're a bit Of course, what you want to know is this. How does it le metal? So we go to the. Well, let's go here first. Um. That's the uh, that thing the Friedman. the torpedo studio before we were in the ox by universal audio <laughs> with rev caps and we're going into the rev generator 100p All these Harley Bentons are kind of tough to bend. Uh, after a few days, it kind of they play themselves in. 
Yeah, the fretboard feels you're getting stuck, but that stops after a while on all of them. It's very uh, thick, not ultra defined in the bottom, but it is fun. <laughs> Now, let, let's, let's be fair and give it a comparison. Let's compare it with the guitar for 900 bucks, which is not a fair comparison, just so you have something to listen to. Here's my Ibanez RGIX Dibble Flibble Hagamine. RGIX 7 FDLB, 900 or 899. No fan fret, but just as a reference. <laughs> A drop A, of course. Okay. So, okay, um, just a quick first impression of this instrument. I'm going to spend some time with it, record a track, which you've already seen at the beginning. Um, $2.99, I think, is the price. Just visually speaking, it's ridiculous to get this for $2.99. It plays well. Set up, it, neck would have to be readjusted a bit, or the strings somehow have to come higher because it has some uh, buzzy spots or some... There, that A is a little bit dead. Uh, so yeah, it has to come up. But <sighs> Grover Tuners, Volute, I think absolutely amazing visuals. And if you're looking for a single cut, seven string with fan frets, who else makes it? I, I literally don't know of a company doing that. Um, so Holly Benton has something unique. Uh, maybe another company does it. Don't, don't nail me down on what I just said. Most certainly not for $2.99. So, I think it is a stunning guitar, and you could absolutely gig with this. Again, adjust it a little bit. You could absolutely gig with this and have a gay old time, as they say. So, uh, check it out, order one, uh, see if you like it. If you don't, send it back. Link below. I think it's a steal. Minus the setup, which you have to, you know, hey, two ninety nine. Links below. Animals at the end. <laughs>